No, 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 no. There we go. Whew. All right. Howdy, folks. I hope everyone's doing great. My name's Chris, and today we're going to take a look at VNM Wheelbase, a, firm, a firmware for DIY false feedback wheels. This is a contender to the ever popular MMOS. Today we're going to take a dive in and see if it's any good for you and whether you should be changing over. Spoiler alert, yes and yes. Now, we've got a lot of things to cover today, so let's get stuck into it. Previously, users were mainly limited to MMOS, which was abandoned back in 2014. It still does a good job handling most games out there, though the source code was never released to the public, so as expected, it's starting to show its age these days, especially when you put it up against the actively developed stuff like Simicube and all that. To give you a little rundown, VNM Wheelbase was developed by a one Hone Tran, and as the name suggests, he's from Vietnam, but on the forums you'll see him as Hone TV. He's a part of a new startup called VNM Simulation JSC, where they aim to deliver high quality simulation equipment and help develop an active online community. Now, he set out to make an open FFB firmware that can talk to virtually any motor, retrieve telemetry from games, and deliver a force feedback experience for the user. It registers as a generic wheel under Windows and utilizes the STM32 32 bit architecture. These chips are cheap, readily available, and are great performers, hence, why you'll see them in basically everything these days. Its main features are 12 force feedback effects and configurable individual effect gains, built-in digital analog converter, FFB frequency up to 4K, it can go higher with higher resolution encoders, configurable filters and user effects. Future features are load cells with high resolution and frequency, 24-bit multi-channel ADC, angle sensors, absolute encoder support, um, configure the driver from the GUI, button boxes, steering wheels, all that, and loads more. It is worth noting that open does not mean open source, but rather openly source any motor or driver to work with the platform, rather than being locked down to a specific driver or motor driver combo. In short, if your current setup is supported by MMOS, then it will work with Wheelbase. Unlike MMOS though, where it only has six forces, Wheelbase utilizes 12, giving it access to even more data and it supports um, a higher resolution encoders. Now, for those who aren't too familiar with encoders, then I'll break it down in layman terms for you. Now, encoders are usually talked about in PPR, pulses per revolution, or CPR, counts per revolution. Think of it like the resolution of your wheel. If you have an incre incremental encoder, with a 2,500 PPR, that means for every full 360 degrees of rotation, you have 2,500 points of reference. Now divide that by 360, every one degree of movement, you have seven points of reference. Using software, you can utilize a technique called quadrature, and basically you'll get four points of reference or counts for every pulse. So 2,500 PPR would be 10,000 CPR. This number will determine the feel and fidelity of your experience. The more resolution you have to work with, the more finer control you will have over the motor, giving the user more immersive experience. So yes, bigger is better here. To an extent, of course. Going from 2,500 to 10,000 might feel the world of difference, but going from 10,000 to 4,000, the difference felt may not be as extreme, and so on. My girlfriend always said, it's not the size of the boat in the ocean, it's the motion in the ocean. <laughs> but thanks, honey. Um, but bigger is better here. Finally, Finally, you also have the absolute encoders, which are talked about in bits, and while incremental encoder pulses are usually talked about in the tens of thousands, absolute encoders are talked about in the millions, hence their popularity. The maximum encoder counts are down to the driver's ability to support them. A hunt is underway to find the golden driver that ticks all the boxes. Good encoder support at high speed and a good price. It's not as easy as it sounds though. So far, some tests with various drivers and encoders have been performed, and here are a few of their results. Now, the standout here you would think would be the Midge driver, right? With the 23-bit absolute encoder support. Unfortunately, it's too slow at 5 milliseconds, which becomes unsuitable for our application. So, the hunt continues. A new driver arrives at Hone's house next month for testing, which is apparently supporting 23-bit encoder at 2.5 to 3 kilohertz, 
and he's also in talks with uh, manufacturers about uh, designing his own custom driver for this application. So watch this space and fingers crossed. Another thing in heavy development is their FFB board. This will be a feature packed unit, including support for, but not limited to, isolating com completely for direct drive on DC motors, nearly supporting all AC motors using PWM and analog control, 24 bit by four DAC ADC with load cell, brakes, two analog for throttle and clutch, 4x4 matrix button support, XY shifter support, all configurable within the wheelbase software. Now that we've got all that out of the way, let's go over setting up the firmware and the user interface and go for a drive and test it out. Okay, so first thing I wanna head over to is Home TV Cast Simulator Firmware GitHub. The link will be in the description below. Right, now what we wanna do is download this whole repository here by clicking download zip. All right. Now, it's just worth mentioning, if you wanted to use the built-in DAC, instead of using the PWM pins, 9 and 11, you want to use PA4 and 5. Now, I'm using an external digital analog converter, so I'll be using these still. Um, it's just worth noting, if you don't have one and you want to clean your signal, use these. All right. Now, once that's downloaded, you also want to connect your STM32 to your computer for programming. So if your board doesn't have a programmer built in like the discovery, then you'll need a programmer, something like the ST-Link V2. It's cheap. There is the, the official one, but it's just a waste of money in my opinion. This works fine for peanuts. Now, if you go to your manufacturer's page of your board, depending on what board you have, hopefully, like mine does, it lists the pinout. So basically I've connected VCC, ground, SW die, SW clock, and reset. Now you find the corresponding pins on your ST link, and I use 3.3 volt, depending on what your board set up for. Um, it will depend on if you use 5 volt or 3.3. Now, once you're all connected, you should be able to Open the folder you just downloaded, extract it to somewhere. You have the update tool here. That's your ST-Link program. That's what we're gonna use right now. So what we wanna do is open ST-Link. We wanna connect. F everything looks good here. So that, that means we're connected. We've done the right pins. We can then full chip arrays. All right, this takes a short while. And then once you've erased it, we can go program verify. Now you want to link to the folder we just downloaded, right? Car simulator. We then go to wheelbase for the firmware. Uh, this is the latest up top. And we want to go to 23.23.2.5. Okay. Select open. Make sure verify while programming's done. We click start. Couple seconds and we're good. Now, I've plugged my board also into the USB, so I can straight away go into the UI folder, find the latest UI, double click on VNM wheel config. Now, if everything's good, you should see the green light next to your wheel. That's what we want to see. All right, now I'm going to go plug in my wheel and we'll come back and set up this hardware or the software, should I say, for the hardware. And we'll, um, yeah, get calibrating and test some things out. Okay, so once we've plugged your wheel in, I still haven't released my e-stop yet, but just a quick overview. You've got your basic um, degrees of rotation, your centralized button, your calibrate button, your stop force, minimum force, max force. Now these are your filters. Filters. So basically what I've been told is 1% of your encoder resolution is what your overall filter should be. So mine should be 25 if it's 2500 PPR, which it is. Okay, now this is all your the user effects you can input manually, all right? Um, this is your overall game effects. You can reverse the 
um, feedback. If some games have a reverse feedback, it's easier than going in and editing files. Um, so, now, if you move your wheel, you should see a nice little image of your wheel in the middle there. You've got your profiles down the bottom here, so you can save and load profiles. You can donate a beer to the team, and here's your reply for the settings. Now, what we're interested in first is the hardware tab. Now, a lot of this you won't need to fiddle with. Um, basically, I'm going to leave it at PWM. I'm going to go to signal and direction. I'm going to, well, I'm not too sure about this, to be honest. Um, I know Thanos uses 5.6 on MMOS. So I'm going to just start with that, see how that goes. All right, use the index, make, that, make sure that's connected. PPR resolution, that's right. And FFP frequency, we'll just leave that for now. You don't have to adjust any of this tuning, right? So just click apply and save. Now we go back. We've got to calibrate the wheel. Basically every wheel is set up to run at a different RPM. So if you're in DC, then basically however much voltage you're going to be putting will determine your speed. Um, the AC ones, you set speed in the driver. So it's going to calibrate, it's going to detect the wheel speed, and it's going to set up your false feedback tuning according to your speed of your wheel. So right now, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to, but I just centralize it before. All right. Oops, I should have left that a bit longer because it just didn't like that. Okay, let's give it a bit. And... Oh yeah, sweet. All right. Now I'm going to click calibrate and in the past, this is where we've had issues with the AASD drivers. They would just spin continuously, but um, just keep your hands free. Oh my God. Unfortunately, I didn't release the e-stop, so there we go. Okay, now if it isn't centered, you can center it again. But I can definitely feel the motor is engaged. It's calibrated. I'm going to set my overall filter to 25 before I forget. All right, I'm going to stop force, minimum force at zero, max force high. You can adjust your force in the game. It's probably the best way to do it to avoid clipping. Now, I'm going to apply. I'm not going to touch any of this for now, but um, you can save a profile. Let's call it a set of Corsa. Okay. Save. Cool. Now, I can feel some dampening effect here. Now, Gain saturation. Now we want to probably put all this. Let's leave this off, this off, this off. Hmm. All right, now we've just got the spring. All right, now that seems. A little weak, but maybe we can adjust this. Yeah, that's that's a lot tighter. All right, so it's just going to be setting it up to your personal preference. I'm just going to probably set it like that. I'm going to turn off these user effects because that's going to affect gameplay if you leave that on. I think, I'm not sure, I'm assuming so. All right, now that's pretty much it. You set up, now we can go, if we go into game, where is it? USB game controllers. 
Should see VNM SIM as a game controller, right? Properties. Okay. Usually you can. Right, so that's not there. All right. <laughs> Don't know what the go is there. Now, what we're going to do, let's just go to. A game. First thing you'll need to do is set up. Um, right, it's been a while since I've had to do this. Controls. I want to change that to a wheel. Now, let's go to access. Steering. There we go. Perfect. Just leave it at 900 degrees. Let me test the hard bumps. Nice. All right. Now, I'm just going to make sure all my stuff works. Sweet. Now I'm going to save that preset. It's wheelbase. All right. Now let's go try a track, I guess. Just to light it up. nice that's for sure you can feel the curve feels oh, feels great the understeer you can really feel when you're understeering and yeah so I'm trying to force it. Great. Now it's going to take some tuning in the actual game settings to get the right feedback you like, the right curb feel, understeer feel, and all that. So final thoughts, if you're currently running MMOS, then it's a no-brainer. You should be halfway through flashing your firmware by now. The fidelity and precision this firmware adds, uh, brings adds so much to the experience and going back to MMOS just feels flat and bland. Uh, to think that nine months ago this firmware was just some lines of code as a proof of concept without a user interface and to see how far it has come today is such, in such a short time is outstanding. 
I'm very excited for the future of this software and I believe it is the future, especially for DIY hobbyists looking to get into direct drive on any budget. It isn't without its quirks though. Um, with such a fragmented list of supported equipment, it's very difficult to program for every scenario. Some games may need some in your files edited to get working. Some games may suffer from the old FFB dropouts, mainly race room at this stage, but everything I've thrown at it has worked like a dream. As I run the Thanos direct drive board for digital analog converter, I, I have two boards flashed, one with MMOS, one with v, um, VNM wheelbase, and it's easily swap it, swappable. So um, these days wheelbase has matured so much that I find myself just running wheelbase permanently. Also, if you're using MMOS to run your shifter and pedals, then I suggest you either buy another STM32 board to run this uh, firmware and keep MMOS running your other gear. In the future, the firmware will control all this gear the same way, but getting FFB working properly across a range of devices is his priority right now. The other thing this software currently controls is their own billet H pattern and sequential shifter combo. In the future, he said he will open it up to be able to control other DIY shifters, but currently he's just focusing on getting this uh, support for his shifter ironed out. And um, I've actually ordered a first batch of this shifter. It's in the mail right now. Can't wait for it to arrive. I'm gonna do a full review on this channel. So if you wanna see that, like and subscribe. At 199 US dollars, it's very attractive piece of gear and I can't wait to put it through its paces. In the meantime though, I urge you all to jump onto VNM's Discord page. Link is in the description and join the community download and try out this firmware, report any issues you may come across. Hone is very active. Um, Hone is very active on there and a lot of other knowledgeable members that can also assist where needed are there. Um, the more people testing this means more robust, refined experience for us all going forward. Thanks for watching and maybe I'll see you on the track. Peace out. Oh,